who are we to give you this and tricks to climb Kilimanjaro? Well, we are on top of it right now. <laughs> This morning was the hardest day that we've ever done. So let's go down a few hundreds or thousands of meters so we can talk again because up here, not a lot of oxygen. So what about equipment? Uh, first of all, we're not going to go through the entire list of everything we brought. Instead, in the description of this yeah. video, I'm going to put a list right there so you can have a look at it. But um, if you're missing stuff, like just like us, if you're not like super outdoorsy, like you might not have like rain pants, and you, you might not wanna... have like sleeping bags. Yeah, and you don't want to have to like spend the money on it just for like one week, exactly. you know what I mean? So uh, companies like Climb Kili, they can rent you like basically anything you're mm -hmm. missing. So make sure to do that that here's two things that we wish we would have had but we didn't okay so they do provide a foam mattress and it's perfectly fine like it's we slept on it all week but our hips really hurt so yeah. i would either suggest bringing your own um like small inflatable one or renting an or extra just one. Rent one yeah so that would have been yeah. nice the second thing is a second pair of boots and it's a little tricky because boots are very heavy and, and you're expensive. only yeah, but you're only allowed to bring 15 kg yeah. um, of everything you have, basically, unless you carry it in your bait in your day pack. But that's too much effort, yeah. to be honest. Uh, it makes no sense. You don't want to take a few things out of the the packing list and yeah. replace it by a second pair of boots. I think that would be a great thing because right now it's pour it, it poured rain almost all day our boots are drenched with the moisture that's not always able to dry out so there comes and play your second pair of boots yes yeah. okay so a typical day for us and this is going to depend on your pace and everything but the structure is still the same um we end up getting up we get woken up at six you can have hot chocolate or whatever in your tent however i don't trust myself not to spill it so i wait for breakfast and then around quarter to seven, seven-ish is when breakfast is ready. So in that meantime, you pack up all of your gear, your sleeping bag and everything, and they lay a tarp out and you put it all there. That way the tents are ready to come down. And then we come down to the breakfast tent. Oh. And we have breakfast till about 7.30ish. And then we get ready for the day of hiking. We normally leave around eight o'clock. Hike for depending what the itinerary is that day. And then, yeah, you do that every single morning. After hiking for a few hours, sometimes many hours, uh, you arrive at your new camp for the night where you're gonna have lunch, rest for the afternoon, have supper, get your plan ready for the following day, and it starts again as soon as you wake up the next morning. So you might be wondering what is the water situation? Well, the water situation is pretty straightforward. The first day you need three to four liters for your personal use to bring in your backpack. But as soon as you arrive at your first camp, there's gonna be water there for you to drink. Where is it from? Good question. It's coming from Achilles Glacier uh, that's melting and coming down the mountain. So porters will go get the water. And to be honest, between you and I, the water is probably fine to drink straight from the source, but they always take the extra precaution and uh, filter uh, that said water. So water situation, 10 out of 10. Okay, so the next thing that people always ask is about Dymox. Can I preface this, this is not medical advice, nothing like that, but we did end up taking it. And I don't know, was it attributed to that, was it not? Um, we had really good results with it, but with the Dymox, you really do have to drink a lot of water because it does dehydrate you. That being said, makes you have to come and pee a lot. So just talk with your guides and stuff because you can kind of space it out in different timings. 
to minimize that so you can still sleep as well. For those of you who don't know, the Diamox is actually the high altitude medication. It's staring at my heart when I'm with you. And when we are apart, I feel it too. Bringing a portable speaker, especially for the Lazi, is actually a very good tip. <laughs> at first I was good at bringing it, because we didn't use it, but the last time we definitely we needed it. Without you. <laughs> <laughs> Awa! Awa! Kiwi! Okay, so the next thing that we heard like kind of mixed reviews on are do you bring your snacks? Um, in the itinerary it says like make sure you do bring your own snacks but a lot of people are like oh they feed you a lot you don't need them. That is true. They do feed you a lot. However, when you're doing your hikes and sometimes your hikes are like I think our longest one was like six, seven hours it is encouraged to keep eating. We ended up eating all of them did we have an appetite for them? Were we hungry? Not necessarily, but it gives you that energy on the trail. So this is pretty much all I have left now. But I had like an easy carb sugar, and then I had like a cereal bar. I had some Cliff bars, and I also had like uh, Nature Valley grain bars as well. And to be honest, I'm thankful that I did, because when I felt like I was getting tired, ate some snacks, drank some water, and felt fantastic again. Okay, so one of the most important question is like, what route should you do? Well, that depends yeah. on a lot of different things, but there's two principal ones. What is your experience with high altitude mm -hmm. and hiking in general? And also, what time of the year do you want to do it? Because uh, rainy season, some most companies are closing, and there's like January and February, which are very, very popular. Yeah. So, of course, if it's more popular of a month, you'll see more people on the trail, so less private and yeah. alone with nature. So we chose the Mashame route and basically we did that based off of not having much experience with high altitude training. Zero. So we wanted to give our chance, our bodies like the best chance to acclimatize. And then on top of that, we still wanted to enjoy it. So a yeah. perk with this route is like, it's literally a different climate every day that you're climbing, yeah. which was beautiful. And Why? a company like Climb Killy have like many, many options of different route, different length. So yeah. check it out. But just keep in mind that Mount Kilimanjaro is a UNESCO site. There's over 30,000 people climbing uh, to the summit every single year. So chances are you're never going to really be alone on the trail unless you do, I guess, the hardest route in the middle of rainy season, which I do not suggest. Where am I now? Well, now I'm in a market. Let me tell you how the last day actually goes and we'll talk about summit day right after. So you wake up in the morning after a very nice night of sleep. You have breakfast, you have uh, about three hours, uh, depending on your beat, of course, uh, three hours to walk down. And then after that, you go on, well, you sign out of the park, go on a bus and come to this beautiful market where you're gonna have lunch. After lunch and a little bit of shopping, you get your certificate, a little dance, then you drive back to the hotel and it's time to say goodbye. <laughs> So the big question, what is summit day? Well, first, let me show you something for me. Ah, yeah. That's, that's, oh, yeah. that's good hair this right hair there. Is, oh, we're just about to jump in the yeah. shower. So let's start it from that morning. So you basically wake up, you do your walk that little bit in the morning. Like a normal hike, like so normal hike day. It was like a four or five hour, a little yeah. shorter though. Um, you get to camp for an early-ish lunch, and then you're basically napping from like one to 4.30 because then you have an early supper. Yeah, and then you nap again. <laughs> yeah, so that's the key. You have to nap again from let's say about 6 to 11 yeah. p.m. to wake up and start your push at 12 a.m. So basically midnight of the following like, yeah. day. Here goes nothing. Very key component here. Climb Kili is one of the only company that has a special permit yeah. to sleep at Kosovo camp, which brings you like almost what, like a kilometer closer to the yeah. summit anyway it, there's... there's a couple companies but like this yeah. really stands out and it makes a huge difference because right before that you do like a massive rock. it cuts like um, an hour from your final summit day. yeah you start walking it is pitch black 
and basically you're going uphill for about five kilometers. six hours and yes it's only five kilometers but there's so much like actually no there's yeah. a lack of oxygen <laughs> making this like extremely hard it was so, hard hard yeah that was the hardest which to be expected but that was the hardest mm -hmm point of the entire trip the rest was yeah okay a little hard here and there yeah. but that was the game changer and don't get me wrong like it gets colder and colder and colder oh yeah you stop for breaks and, and like you just freeze and <laughs> at the top there's basically nothing left to shield you um and because of that well well it's it's freezing so it after is. that you finally make it to uh uhuru -huh uh, peak uh, when we were there there was a lot of people so like people were like kind of pushy a little bit to like take photos yeah. but I mean that's a reality of it everyone worked so hard to get yeah uh, of course to get up there and we were very lucky because we were uh, there for sunrise I highly suggest that you do everything you can to be there for sunrise because yeah. it is simply outstanding it's so crazy yeah and uh, you stay there for about like 20 something minutes you mm -hmm. can't really stay there long because it's at 5895 yeah. meters like it is not healthy not no. good to stay there for long you just increase your risk of getting more altitude yeah. sickness basically. and after that you go down and i wish i could tell you that that is the end of the day but it is not so <laughs> um you go back down that 5k which only took us about an hour and a half yeah. we were kind of booking it um, and then depending on what time you get down you can either have like an hour's rest or whatever and then you have lunch but right after lunch you have to do another three to four no, hours definitely four and a half hours but Tracy and I decided to go like sport mode and like we booked it um, we arrived and like the, the camp wasn't even finished being they all kind of looked like, built. Like, they what? looked at us like, why are you already here? Anyway, um, yeah. but yeah. That part is hard because it's extremely, the second part of it is hill. still rocky. Yeah. And like it's just a weird rocky, so it is really hard. But yeah, once you get there, you can have a little rest and then you have supper and then you can finally go to bed. And that was the best night ever. Yes, we slept so good. Yeah, so that is the reality of Summit yeah. Day. It's almost 21 hours yeah. um, for and your the, full day. Then the following day you go throw us away down. Yeah. But I need to uh, take these socks off. I mean, we need to get in the shower. It's shower time. <laughs> Let's go to the shower. So first of all, let me tell you that that was a glorious shower and it feels so good oh, to man. be back at the hotel. It feels great, although we just went up a set of stairs and it felt like we went up 15. Yeah, now we're going to give you uh, two extra tips. Yeah. Just because we're nice people. Layers. So I know they talk about layers and even us going into it, we're like, that sounds like too many layers. I think the right word is to have the proper layers. Um, because some we're talking days, about clothing, by the way. Oh, yeah, that's true. Um, besides summit day, that's a whole other situation. But you start off cold normally and like you're peeling everything off by midday, then a cloud rolls in, then you're putting some stuff back on. Yeah. So my three main ones were like a wind jacket slash rain jacket, a small puffer jacket, and a long sleeve. Yeah. Those were my three for every day except summer day. <laughs> yeah. And the secret for layers is they don't they can't be tight. If they're tight, then you can't have like air yeah. to get warm in between your layers. So like that's that's the main thing. Yeah. But otherwise, yeah. Thermals are gonna be your best friend. Your base layer should always be a thermal. I agree. I, I lived and hiked most of the days with just a thermal, but like He's when it was little... getting well, when it was getting windy and stuff, I was just putting your my puffer. Uh, my puffer or my wind jacket. Yeah. So there's that. Second tip, peeing. What? Yeah. I'm going to talk Don't about pee. Don't hold pee. your pee. Do not hold your pee, especially when you're sleeping. In the because tent. your body's working so hard to keep oh, yeah. that pee warm so your body doesn't shut down that you're wasting a lot of your heat because of yeah. that. So if you're very cold, you wake up shivering in the middle of the night, go to the bathroom, yeah. come back, you'll be much better. Yes, um, definitely didn't do that properly like the first few nights. <laughs> I told her. But then, then we leveled out. <laughs> It's precious information, trust me. <laughs> so a massive thank you to Climb Kelly for this once in a lifetime adventure. It was a blast. So see you guys. <laughs> Cheers. In the next one. <laughs>